So our drug is called Kidney Stone, uh, and it's for preventing relapses in patients who have nephrotic syndrome. What is nephrotic syndrome? It's a condition that causes the kidneys to leak large amounts of protein into the urine. Uh, kidneys are damaged and unable to act as a barrier to important proteins that help to protect the body and keep everything functioning properly. It is a rare condition and with periods of remission and relapse, and that's what we are concerned with. Okay, so the signs and symptoms of nephrotic syndrome are swelling, which can be observed in the eyes, the lower legs, and the rest of the body. And infections are common as well because antibodies, which are specialized proteins, are lost in the urine, which increases the risk of infection. Also, there can be changes in the urine as well as high levels of protein cause the urine to be frothy. And patients may feel fatigued and loss of appetite as well. Okay, and there's a need for treatment because um, when patients contract upper respiratory tract um, infections, which are very common, then they tend to relapse afterwards. And there's currently no, you know, there's no prevention for that. So it would really help to improve patient well-being if they could, if they could try and prevent that with a new drug. Our new treatment is kidney stone. It's a medicine that in phase two, two trials suggests that can prevent relapse of nephrotic syndrome when you have an upper respiratory tract infection. And it's, it will be taken orally and will be taken twice a week with 35 milligram tablets. So the objective of our study, it's a phase three study, it's to find out if kidney stone prevents relapse in patients who are in remission with nephrotic syndrome and have an upper respiratory tract infection. Okay, it's, it's for patients between 5 and 16 years old, um, and they must have nephrotic syndrome, but they have to be in remission. So therefore, like, they have to have minimal um, symptoms. So that means minimal swelling of their eyes and legs, and like minimum protein levels in their urine. And they should have no other major diseases or illnesses. So also they shouldn't be taking, you know, any medicines. And they shouldn't be pregnant if they're a woman. Um, so we decided to have two different groups. Um, the first group would have the active drug and they would take 35 milligrams twice a week. And then the group two would just be the placebo. And so um, since the population we're looking for is so specific, we decided to have 1,000 patients overall um, with a two to one ratio, randomization ratio. So 660 patients in group one um, with the active drug and 330 in, with the placebo. And we thought having the higher ratio of the active drug would increase the chance of participation in our trial. So for the study procedures, we would provide a urine dipstick to, to participants to test urine every second day. And they would update anonymous digital diary accessible to the researchers. We have created this personal diary to collect information about the patient's compliance to the therapy. That means if the patient is taking the drug on the right day at the right time and to register any type of side effects. It's important to fill in the diary regularly and it can be completed by the patient or the caregiver. Uh, so we have designed it in a uh, paper form, but uh, uh, as in the future we can uh, our idea was to build like an application. Uh, so uh, it has different pages. Uh, so personal details page, 
uh, and even notes, the dosage, which is 35 milligram for twice a week, and even multiple choice questions about uh, the, gen uh, the gender of the patient in that uh, week or day. And even the symptoms, uh, which are multiple choice. Uh, it's uh, like a network to the doctor and the researcher, so it can be updated uh, daily for uh, the symptoms that the patient has. Um, so first for recruitment, we decided that we could look at a registry of all the patients who have nephrotic syndrome. And then um, by where they are in location, we could use ads and flyers to a link to a website where they can find our patient information sheet. Um, so this website will have um, information for the parents, like on parent level, and then we would have another section of it for teens. And then the one we focused on was for ages five to eight, and that would be a comic. And on this website where the parents are, there would be a link to this comic. When they open the comic, they'll be able to pick their own character. And after they pick their own character, the next slide would show all the professionals that they would have there, such as the doctors, nurses, and researchers. After that, they'll go through the stages of the six-month trial, like meeting with the doctor, the blood draw in the collection cup, and then the final result. At the end, it's a, it'll say, once you have made your decision, please contact your doctor, and then it'll have more information about how to proceed with the trial. Uh, there were some safety and ethical uh, things to think about. One is, if the, well, since we're looking at relapse, is if a patient does relapse, when should they be released from the study so they can receive the uh, uh, typical uh, treatment that goes along with that? We also, since this is a phase three trial, this is the first time that we'll be looking at the more uncommon side effects and we need to have plans in place for anything that could come up. Since also this is an international uh, study, we need to have research doctors available all the time, and they can look at the participant record information in the digital diary, which will, be able, which will allow them to monitor treatment and possible side effects. Thank you. Thank you. I'm starting to sound quite repetitive, but thank you once again for <laughs> a fantastic um, presentation. Um, I really liked your um, consideration of your safety and your ethical aspects and the, the consideration of relapse. I, mean, I think that's really kind of um, you know, a mature thing to have, have considered. Um, with regards to your recruitment, um, I, I wasn't clear from your protocol. Are you rec you're recruiting patients with nephrotic syndrome and then are you waiting until they have a cold? and then trying to get them into your trial and onto your trial very quickly? Or are you going to recruit the patients with an, into your trial with nephrotic syndrome, and then if they have a cold, they go on to the treatment? Um, yeah, so for this trial, it said that they have to have nephrotic syndrome as well as an upper respiratory tract infection. So we'll have them, um, we'll probably catch them when they have nephrotic syndrome, and then as soon as they develop an upper respiratory tract infection, we'll recruit them in. Thank you again. Um, I just have one question. So you mentioned using dipsticks to test the urine. Um, do you plan on um, training the patients to do that at home? Uh, yeah, we were thinking of having some kind of, along with the patient information sheet, uh, instructions on, and probably when they were provided, to be provided with instructions on appropriate usage. Again, feel free to pass the microphone down the line if you want. If anyone else wants to join in for any of the questions, feel free. Um, one question I had was about how long you'd be treating the patients for. Would it just be until the signs of the respiratory infection had cleared up, or was it all going to be a set period of time on the treatment for all patients? You're the team leader. Nominate. Just throw the microphone at someone. Take control. Yes. <laughs> So the question is, 
question is, um, how are you going to treat your patients for? Is it going to be until the symptoms have resolved? Or are you going to treat all patients on a set duration of treatment, even if their their respiratory infection clears up after one week, are they still on your treatment for a month? How long does your treatment last for? Well, the idea was to keep them on the treatment for the entire duration of the trial to make sure.